Hello dear students I am Dibashri Sahu from the Paul School Barampur Today I am going to discuss one of the important chapters of chemistry of class 10th ICSE syllabus that is analytical chemistry use of ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide You all know that it is very exciting to watch the various different chemical changes which occur in a chemical laboratory maybe we won't be able to bring about all the chemical changes to the class but definitely we can show you in the pictures about how we are actually doing chemical changes in the laboratory here we are discussing about two magical laboratory reagents one is ammonium hydroxide and the other one is sodium hydroxide now let us discuss about the scope of icsc syllabus in the icsc syllabus we are going to discuss about the action of ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide on the solution of various different types of salts or solutions especially calcium iron copper zinc and lead also we are going to discuss about the action of alkalis that is sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide on various different types of amphoteric oxides and amphoteric hydroxides the changes will be definitely exciting and please remember to read according to the scope of icsc syllabus it is very important to follow the scope of syllabus now you will be asking me what is analytical chemistry now chemistry is having various different types of branches one of the important branches of chemistry is analytical chemistry in this branch we are actually determining the various chemical components present in a substance and the analysis of the substances occurs in two ways one is quantitative analysis and the other one is a qualitative analysis In this step we are finding out the various different types of chemicals which are found in the surrounding so you can say that it is a way of determining what are the components present in a compound and how much of is each one of the component present in that particular chemical compound so really exciting branch of chemistry and very colorful now we are going to uh, tell you what is qualitative and what is quantitative analysis quantitative as the name suggests is the measurement of weights and volumes and what are we measuring here we are determining the composition of the various components in a mixture or in a compound we are finding out how much is each element present in qualitative analysis we are identifying the unknown substances present in a mixture now you will tell me that miss that qualitative analysis means identifying the component so how will we identify which one is what that means which one is a positive ion which one is a negative ion so for this we are having various different types of chemicals which helps us in identifying the positive and the negative ions so qualitative analysis of cations and anions means identification of unknown substances with the help of reagents and what reagents are we going to use here here the important re laboratory reagents are alkalis you all know that alkalis are bases which are soluble in water but remember all alkalis are bases but all bases are not alkalis so all the bases which are soluble in water we call them as the alkalis and what are the alkalis that that we are using over here basically we are using some important alkalis which are generally soluble in water these are the sodium hydroxide and the potassium hydroxide solutions we are using this for testing sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide why these two chemicals were chosen for of uh, using in the analytical chemistry uh, there is a reason behind it it is because sodium hydroxide is a very strong alkali and ammonium hydroxide is a weak alkali so we are using two different parameters for identifying the chemicals here these alkalis are generally when they react with the various different types of metal salts they form the precipitates which are colored in nature and by seeing this colored precipitates which are generally hydroxides which may be soluble or insoluble we try to identify the compounds now you will tell me ask me what is a precipitate now precipitate is generally a solid substance formed by the reaction between two solutions you can see in this diagram we are having three tubes one of which is a clear solution no disturbance in it the other one you can see 
particle suspended in it this is known as a suspension and the third one you can see the upper part is a clear solution which is called as a supernatant and at the lower part the blue part which you are seeing it is actually a precipitate so precipitate is a insoluble part which is settling down at the base of the test tube and by seeing the color of this precipitate we can identify what is the compound present in that particular solution so isn't it an exciting way to determine what compound we are studying and what is it what are the ions present in it now color of various salts and its solutions are very important before we are doing any tests you know that when you go to the lab you see salts of different colors some of the salts may be colored some may not be colored as you can see the color of the salt is because of its cation and anion now here here i have made a table actually i have downloaded it from the net and you here you can see that there are various colorless ions and various colored ions although you have to remember the list of the various colored and the colorless ions and then remember that the ions can be identified based on their colors only this is the first hand identification after that we have to confirm it by using certain chemicals this is not the confirmatory test but rather you can say that this is the first hand identification of the chemical compounds cupric ion blue in color uh, ferric ion green in color or you can say the uh, sorry ferrous ion is pale green in color ferric ion is uh, reddish brown in color manganese is light pink in color so you by seeing these bottles and the colors you can definitely identify what the chemical compound is by knowing what the ion is so this is only we are here in this chapter we are discussing only about the cations details about the anions is and their identification is not there in a in your course but some part of it we will be discussing in the last chapter that is the practical chemistry chapter where we are identifying sulfate ions and chloride ions and nitrate ions now let us see the action of sodium hydroxide on various metal salts here there is a table in which the first column shows you the ion the second the salt third one is the reaction fourth precipitate and the last one tells about about solubility in excess of alkali always remember whenever you are asked to do a reaction in analytical chemistry you have to do the two ends that is first you have to use a limited amount of the reagent sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide and then you also have to do use excess of it and show us both the observations so here you can see the color of the precipitates when the salts react with sodium hydroxide white green dirty green reddish brown and then also the solubility in the last column coming to the next slide this is the action of ammonium hydroxide on various metal salts you can see that the color and the precipitate color of the precipitate is usually the same but the solubility is quite different the important salts to note here are copper and zinc which you can see that in limited amount they are forming pale blue precipitate but in excess it, a copper is forming inky blue solution and for zinc it is gelatinous white in excess it is clear solution this is an interesting slide which i have taken from your textbook dalal and here you can see um, that uh, we are actually discussing about the color of the various uh, salt solutions uh, or you can say the precipitates formed when salt solutions react with various different types of compounds and here you discuss you are seeing that uh, Fe plus two is forming dirty green precipitate in small amount and in excess it is forming insoluble. Then reddish brown precipitate for Fe three plus in excess it is insoluble. For uh, uh, copper you can see that we are having a deep blue solution in excess. No precipitate in case of calcium. Very important to remember. Calcium is quite different when it is reacted with sodium hydroxide and uh, with ammonium hydroxide. Zinc you can see that in small amount it is forming gelatinous white precipitate in excess soluble. Of of course lead it is insoluble in excess the chalky white precipitate remains as it is here we are having a list of all the metal salts forming colorless precipitate and also uh, you can see the reaction with both sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide come to aluminium soluble in excess and gives a 
colorless solution in case of lead it is soluble in excess when we treat with sodium hydroxide colorless solution again zinc also form a colorless solution in excess calcium is different you can see the solution is quite turbid with ammonium hydroxide again aluminium gives a insoluble precipitate white precipitate lead also gives an insoluble white precipitate but see zinc zinc is forming a clear solution so here zinc is quite different when it reacts with sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide this can be used as a identification of the zinc salt so here uh, it can be also a distinction between zinc and lead salt here you can see the reaction of sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide with metal salts forming colored precipitates look at the very nice colorful precipitates copper forming pale blue precipitate insoluble in excess with sodium hydroxide with ammonium hydroxide see the lovely inky blue color solution we also call it as a dark blue or azure color for iron it is forming dirty green precipitate insoluble in excess for for both sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide for iron it is quite different reddish brown precipitate insoluble in excess for both sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide these are again different colors uh, you can see for aluminum white precipitate and also for copper valency 2 iron valency 2 3 and zinc so the color of the various different types of precipitates help us in identifying the cations present in it in limited quantities it shows a different type of reaction in excess the precipitate may be soluble may not be soluble when it is soluble we need to identify the solution and then write the chemical test for it so always remember observations should be clear you should write in both limited quantity and also in excess quantity what are the changes that you are observing when a particular chemical reacts with another chemical now we are going to discuss about the amphoteric oxides and hydroxides when alkalis react with metals metal oxides and metal hydroxides of lead zinc and aluminium why lead zinc and aluminium are unique because these are amphoteric metals and these amphoteric metals when they are unique that means they must be having some peculiar quality and the peculiar quality over here is they can react both with acids as well as bases to produce salt and water ampho you may know the meaning like for example amphibians live both in land and water similarly i can use the term ampho here for reaction with both acid ox acids as well as bases so isn't it that they are unique and we can use them in the lab for identification here we are having the various reaction of uh, zinc and aluminium oxides and hydroxides on sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide you can see the products over there quite uh, uh, unique products these are the compounds which are usually sodium zincate as the product potassium zincate complex salts these are sodium aluminate potassium aluminate so these are the various different type of unique compounds which you can see and remember that you have to write the correct formula of the compounds in the examination balancing and correct balancing is very important please practice balancing equations in the with the help of notebook and practice regularly some important tips for you to remember chemistry better practice the chemical formula regularly you need to understand the concept please do not by heart it you will not remember it practice equations with the help of pen and paper orally you can never remember equations try to analyze the products in every chemical reaction and please write the chemical observation for it when you analyze it and remember the observation it will be easier for you to write the products of a chemical reaction use same chemicals to distinguish between the various compounds very important to distinguish between a zinc salt and lead salt always use ammonium hydroxide and write the observation after it don't use different chemicals for two different ty types of salts some sample questions for you the first one given over here is about uh, a column match the following question column a consists of all the ions and column b the color of the precipitates and the solubility in excess 
you have to match the column always remember whenever you are doing a match the column question remember to write both the columns column a and column b and write the correct matching pair never put arrow marks or hyph uh, hyphens or just put the numbers to write the match the following it is always uh, good to write both the columns and the correct matching pair whenever you are writing the answers remember for ions you have to write the solubilities in excess if it is given in the question the next one is here is about the equations remember that balanced equation should be given whether it is given or not in the question always balance the chemical equations for second question is about balancing equation so please balance the equation and then after treating it with sodium hydroxide and uh, ammonium chloride uh, zinc oxide with any sodium hydroxide ammonium chloride with sodium hydroxide write the correct balanced equation third one is an interesting com question comes in the uh, examination usually it is a analytical question identifying the compounds we have given you three different type of substances based on the color of the precipitates and the reaction you have to identify it the fourth question is a chemical distinction question. Remember, I said already, you have to use the same chemical to distinguish between two chemical compounds. Here we are distinguishing, uh, distinguishing iron 2 chloride and iron 3 chloride by using either sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide. Both of them are giving you a colored precipitate and uh, the, in case of iron 2 chloride, it will be dirty green. In case of iron 3 chloride, it will be reddish brown in color. Next one is between zinc and calcium. Uh, again, you can use either so ammonium hydroxide uh, to uh, distinguish or sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide would be better because zinc is soluble in excess, calcium is not soluble. For iron 3 chloride and copper, you can use uh, ammonium hydroxide because ammonium hydroxide will be giving you an inky blue solution for copper. Thank you so much, dear students. I hope you liked the video. Uh, please share your comments. I'll always try to rectify my mistakes. Thank you so much for your patience. Hello, dear students. I am Dibashri Sahu from Deepal School, Barampur. Today, I'm going to discuss one of the important chapters of chemistry of class 10th ICC syllabus, that is analytical chemistry, use of ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide. You all know that it is very exciting to watch the various different chemical changes.